Hey guys, Mr. Peter White No No here, and today I'm just going to be talking about um, the year for pro wrestling, well WWE anyway, the year 2014, and for me, one thing that's really stood out for me in 2014 in terms of WWE is how it's not been a very good year for the young talent, and I'm not, and obviously I'm not talking about them, the NXT roster, because that's a completely different story, but um, I want to talk about the young talent on the main WWE roster, and how a lot of it is, you know, a lot of the young talent haven't been fully utilised you know, in the way that they could. Let's start off with Cesaro. So, Cesaro, Cesaro in t um, late 2013 was starting to get over with his massive Cesaro swing. Um, the crowd were really into it, and that caused Cesaro to get a really good, you know, reaction from the crowd. So eventually, um, at WrestleMania 30, you have the pre-show, which is for the WWE tag titles. It's like a four-way tag between the Usos, Los Matadores, um, the uh, or the the Real Americans, and uh, Rybaxel, I think. I I can't remember the fourth tag team, but. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, Cesaro turns on Swagger, so that causes him to turn face. Um, so then you have him go into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and you know he does. He has that signature moment where he picks up the Big Show and he slams, or slam, well he throws him over the top rope like, like when Hulk Hogan slammed Andre the Giant at WrestleMania three. So this was a good starting point for Cesaro, you know, a really good chance to, you know, give him a good singles push. So what do they do the night after? They put him with Paul Heyman. Um, and this, uh, you know, at the time, a lot of people thought this would really help Cesaro in terms of mic skills and stuff. But if anything, it really didn't. Because Heyman wasn't even, you know, building up Cesaro in terms of when he was on the mic. He was, you know... He would rather talk about Brock Lesnar and that sort of thing. So it really didn't benefit Cesaro. And then he was put into a... Um, so that, but he won a triple threat match at Extreme Rules against RVD and Swagger. So, again, still momentum there. But then they put him in a US title match against a Sheamus. Which was interesting because Sheamus has recently won the US title. So you thought maybe oh Sheamus is trans is a transitional champion, and that you know this will be a good signature win for a Cesaro, a payback, but weirdly Sheamus wins, um, which again is very confusing and in my opinion just didn't really make any sort of sense. So he got to Money in the Bank. He again still he's still kind of there. He's still in you know he gets put in the. You know, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match. Um, but then after that, you get to Battleground and, you know, into the summer. And he just doesn't really do anything. He's, he's you know, thrown into the mid-card. He's you know, not really going anywhere. There's no sort of direction with him. And he just doesn't seem to have any sort of, any sort of thought behind him. And then we get to the Night of Champions and he's put in a feud with Sheamus. Um, which he loses, and then after that, well, he gets put in an intercontinental title feud with Ziggler, loses, and now he's for the rest of 2014. He's he was put in a tag team with Tyson Kidd, it wasn't really going anywhere, and it was just it's just been a bad year for Cesaro especially, and I just really think you could have done something really good with Cesaro, because, you know, he's got that build, he's got the wrestling ability, but Vince McMahon, you know, doesn't think he have enough charisma, but you don't necessarily have to be good on the mic to have charisma, there's other things, you, other tools that can be used to gain charisma, which is stupid. I've done a video on this before, so if you want to look up that, about it's called Vince McMahon out of, T is Vince McMahon out of touch, it's on the channel, you can check that out if you want to after this. And then, you look at some of the other younger talents, in the WWE, so you look at say, the, just look at the three members of the Shield. Um, so they had a good start to the year as the faction, you know. Obviously, I mean, they had the tremendous match with the White Family. They lost, but you know, 
they were showing tensions of a breakup, but they, you know, still on the same page. They win at WrestleMania. They beat Evolution in back-to-back pay-per-views. And then the night after payback, they split. And so Seth Rollins, um, in a way, Seth Rollins actually had a pretty good year for himself, to be honest. He won Money in the Bank. He was in a great feud with Dean Ambrose. And so Dean Am- Seth Rollins is one of the young talents who actually had a very good year. So, I'm, I'm, you know, that's probably one of the only exceptions, really. Dean Ambrose, with Dean Ambrose, it was interesting because before the Shield, when the Shield broke up, I, I, I automatically assumed that Dean Ambrose was going to, you know, go to mid-card and sort of just job. But surprisingly, he became the most over guy in the company. With, you know, all those, with a lot of, a lot of people gone. So, you know, Dean Ambrose really stepped up to the plate. You know, I had to heard that feud with Seth Rollins, but the problem was Dean Ambrose was continuing, you know, was just losing match after match after match on pay per view, and it's really, you know, likely it made Dean Ambrose have come across as weak. And you know, I I never understood why they didn't have him. I mean, I understand why they had him lose at Hell in the Cell, but I still think they should have had Ambrose win at Hell in the Cell, and then they should have had. Wyatt, you know, start the feud on Raw the next night, not have Wyatt interfere. Again, that's just my opinion, but I just... The way they managed... The way they kind of booked Dean Ambrose, I think, has been pretty stupid. And if they are going to have another Dean Ambrose-Bray Wyatt match at the Royal Rumble, I think you have to have Bray Wyatt, you know, put Dean Ambrose over. Because you can't have Dean Ambrose continuously losing matches. And you can argue he won a tribute to the troops... But again, that's not a kind of marquee kind of, um, you know, kind of, sh- you know, event like a pay-per-view is, you know. Uh, and I, I, again, I just think with Dean Ambrose, they could have done so much more with him, to be honest, in my opinion. Then they've gone to Roman Reigns, and, you know, you could tell this guy was, you know, getting the jetpack in terms of the push. He was just soaring through, but then he ended up getting injured at Night of Champions. So, Roman Reigns, he could have had a good year. Again, we just don't know, so I can't really judge on that. But, um, again, a lot of the mid-card this year have just gone nowhere. I mean, if you look at the title picture in 2014, who have we had? Look at the Royal... Okay, so you have Cena and Orton at the Rumble, and then you have the Elimination Chamber, which, again, there was some young talent in there. You know, you had Cesaro in there, so that was, you know, fine. And then, obviously, WrestleMania was all about Daniel Bryan, so that's understandable. You have the Triple Threat. And then Extreme Rules, you have Brian and Kane, which I don't think should have happened, really. I think Kane was, Brian was stupid, in my opinion. But And then a payback, you know, you had the Shield and Evolution, which is good for the Shield. It's a main event of pay-per-view, so that was, you know, in my opinion, the right thing to do. You get some money in the bank, and again, you have a lot of the main guys, like Cena and stuff, in the main event. And then you get to around about the summer, and again, again, from, like, SummerSlam and beyond, it was... It was it was one of those things where because you had, didn't have the WWE like World Heavyweight Champion around, a lot of the top card feuds just got really kind of you know you had to base your main event on this on a top card feud that necessarily wasn't that interesting, or you know other other feuds apart from like it's hard to explain but other feuds that weren't the main event kind of suffered like for example when you got to Hell in the Cell. So Lesnar wasn't at this pay-per-view, so you had Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins as the main feud. And obviously because they have nothing to do with Cena and Orton, they just throw them in a match together, again. And and also for people like, again, the mid-card, there's no sort of direction for the mid-card. There's no sort of ideas or feuds for any of these guys. Because a lot of the young guys are in the mid-card. And a lot of them, but I mean, a lot of people could say, oh, well, Dolph Ziggler... Dolph Ziggler, you know, he's had a good year. Um, but the problem, the thing with Dolph Ziggler is that there's two main points. I just think, A, he's not really a young talent. I mean, he's, he's 34. He's the same age as Randy Orton. Or around the same age as Randy Orton, anyway. So, again, I wouldn't consider Dolph Ziggler a young talent. I mean, and also, if you think about it, Dolph Ziggler didn't necessarily have that good of a year, if you think about it, until SummerSlam. And then he kept dropping the title. He won the title three times between August and December. So that was a bit crazy. But yeah, Dolph Ziggler, I didn't think necessarily had the best of years, to be honest. I mean, obviously it's a lot better than 
It's probably his best year, but I don't think I think people are overrating how good Dolph Ziggler's year was this year because it started off horribly. He had no direction until until sort of SummerSlam. So I I I would argue whether Dolph Ziggler had a very good year. But yeah, there's just no sort of direction for anyone who isn't Cena or Orton, especially. And this is a problem because you know. Especially the young guys who are supposed to be the future, they have no, they have no sort of experience with the main event or you know any sort of you know the pressures of main event matches because they're still using people like Cena and Orton and a lot of these older guys in the main event, which I just think is stupid. And I think you need to give, you need to try, and it doesn't necessarily have to be young guys. More the mid card, I think, need more of a kind of experience with the high level guys. But Anyway, thanks for watching guys. This video was a bit all over the place, you know, there was I kind of rambled on a lot of stuff, but yeah, overall 2014 was say what you will in terms of pay-per-view quality. I guess it was a solid pay-per-view quality, but there were a lot of problems with this year in terms of wrestling and stuff. Um so yeah, thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe.